I remember some time back having the great fortune, fortune of meeting Sir Michael Parkinson and uh, he said something that will st stick with me forever. Uh, I didn't apply it, but it'll stick with me forever. He said that whenever he was interviewing somebody, preparation was his secret. He prepared and he prepared and he prepared and he prepared and he never went into an interview without knowing more about the interviewee than the interviewee knew about themselves. He never went into an interview without knowing more about the interviewee than the interviewee themselves knew. <laughs>Welcome to the Coffee of Column and thank you for joining me. The reason I'm smirking uh, as I start this is because the title of this is uh, Measure Twice and Cut Once and it really alludes to that saying that we're all aware of uh, fail to prepare and prepare to fail and I've just recorded this, uh, this video and this podcast um, and realised that uh, I hadn't plugged the mic in <laughs> so I'm recording it again. So anyway, uh, there you go. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Anyway, you all know the phrase, measure twice and cut once, I'm sure. I think it comes from the world of carpentry and it makes perfect sense. In the world of carpentry, uh, if you've got a piece of wood that you need to cut to a particular size to fit in a particular location and you get it wrong, well then you've got a problem. So it makes perfect sense to check your measurements and check them again before you actually apply a saw. And uh, the phrase measure twice and cut once came to me in no uncertain terms following a speech that uh, I made very recently and I'd like to share the story if I may. A little embarrassing for me but I'd like to share it on the basis that I think uh, there are lessons in it for you and I. Anyway, I was asked to make a speech recently. Making speeches isn't typically a problem but I was asked to make a very important speech, not usually a problem, a very short speech usually a problem, let's face it, right? And I had three minutes to get a particular message in and the culmination of my particular message in three minutes was to introduce a very special guest to the audience. So I put a lot of preparation into it. I made sure that I had my message fully on point. I made sure I knew everything I needed to know about uh, the special guest. And then I practiced and I visualized as we all do. And uh, I was full, fully confident stepping up to the microphone for my three minutes. And uh, I, had, I had envisaged the audience would be fully engaged, that my speech would flow, it would be on point, there'd be a few giggles, everything would be great, and I'd pass the microphone seamlessly to the special guest. And it started off like that, and the, the audience was fully engaged, and there were a few giggles, and everything was going swimmingly for about two minutes of the three minutes. And just as I got into the part of my three-minute speech where I was to introduce the special guest, I decided to throw in two facts. And the first fact I threw in was wrong threw in a fact to introduce my special guest and everybody in the room except me knew the fact was wrong and they told me in no uncertain terms that they knew the fact was wrong and I lost them. They left. They started murmuring amongst themselves. I was mortified but of course I'm a professional so I sort of bounced with it, got on with it and finished the speech and passed the microphone over to the special guest and stepped out and everything seemed to be fine. And the special guest, also a professional, uh, decided that uh, he'd take a little uh, poke at me. So he humorously touched on the fact that I'd gotten wrong. We all had a laugh and everything was grand, except I was mortified. Later in the evening, we had a great evening, we had a great night. And then later in the evening, as the special guest was leaving, I was saying uh, thank you to him and uh, uh, goodbye to him and apologizing to him for getting the fact wrong. And wait till you hear this. He says to me, that wasn't the only fact wrong. You got this other fact wrong. I got two facts wrong introducing a very special guest to a very particular audience in three minutes. Could not believe it. Nowhere near good enough. Of course, he said, listen, don't worry about it. What am I to do? Of course I'm going to worry about it. Now, there's nothing I can do about it, but of course I'm going to worry about it. And uh, I've made my peace with the guy. I've made my peace with myself for making such a faux pas. But the problem was all mine. I didn't prepare hard enough. I thought I had, but I didn't prepare hard enough. And it was very simple. If I'd measured twice and cut once, if I'd taken my speech and my facts to some others that were involved and said, here, check this out, they would have picked up immediately. Those two facts are wrong and I wouldn't have made the mistake. I measured once in this particular case. I measured once and I applied the saw. I should have measured twice and then cut once. Anyway, can't turn the clock back. It is what it is. It's not going to happen again, but it happened and I want you to learn from it. And you know what? There's nothing I can do about it, but I'll carry it for the rest of my life, for sure. Sometimes I win and sometimes I learn. In that particular case, I did not win. 
and I hope I've learned and I'm putting it out there in the hopes that you'll learn something from it too. But it also struck me that it's not just in relation to carpentry and not just in relation to making speeches, it's in relation to everything. Fail to prepare and prepare to fail applies to everything. Measure twice and cut once applies to everything. The point is, when you and I are doing anything, anything whatsoever, we've got an opportunity. Once, once, we, once we make a presentation to somebody, that presentation is out there. Once we say a few words, that's out there. Once we send that email, it's done, it's out there. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. We need to measure twice and cut once. Before we send that email, we need to read it again. Before we send that important email, perhaps we need to get somebody else to read it. Before we go to the bank with our business plan, we, make sh we need to make sure that we have our facts straight and that we've got uh, a handle on our numbers. Before we make a presentation to a client uh, to help them with their business in some shape or form using our product or service, we've got to make sure that we know enough about the, the client and their needs so that our proposal is relevant. The last thing we want is to get tripped up uh, sitting across the table from somebody that we're trying to do business with. So fail to prepare, prepare to fail, measure twice and cut once. And remember, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. So that's what we're talking about. Sir Michael Parkinson, world-class, world-class interviewer. And uh, why is he world-class? Because he prepared and he prepared and he prepared and he prepared. So preparation is the key. Remember, you can never do enough preparation. And as you go out to do business this, in this next week, please remember my faux pas, learn from it and uh, measure twice and cut once. And thank you for joining me for this week's Coffee with Column. I hope and trust you got something from it. Most importantly, please consider what's been shared here uh, today and apply it into your thinking for this next week and learn from my mistakes. And then equally as importantly, please come back next week and we'll share another coffee together and I'll ruminate on some other aspect of life and business. In the meantime, get some good coffee, get some fresh air, Get some R&R. &R. If you spend a lot of time alone during the week, I recommend you go meet some people. If you spend a lot of time with people during the week, I recommend you take a little time alone. And then when the time is right, and only when the time is right, get your head back in the game, get organized for the week ahead, prepare, <laughs> get stuck in, make next week count, and I'll see you here this time next week. Slotcha. I love great coffee. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.